That's the that you want to try. I appreciate it. That's awesome. Oh, 
like that but you know he's, he goes to auditions and he gets the auditions so, yeah that's great so you're right you know yeah. it keeps him employed that's so. it's really yeah because yeah. there's a lot of people out there who aren't getting those yeah yeah that's that's for true. sure i know that's what it looks like from up here this is good so if he gets too padded back there i'll stand over here yeah don't stand don't I won't. stand here dude. oh my goodness <laughs> So what I did is I kind of improvised tonight. I'm actually streaming now, but I, I doubt if anybody has tuned in yet. Oh, I see. But okay. what I did is I, shot, I figured I'd shoot the program. And, ah, you know, okay. my way of having the title on. I thought you just had the camera offline. Are you uh, recording or streaming or anything tonight? I am streaming right now, as a matter of fact. With, with Blaine Lee and the camera. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm, I'm um, also going to record too. Okay. Yeah. Right. I just don't want to get in your way. Oh, no, 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 no. No good stuff tonight. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, you're fine. You're fine. And a lot of times, what really was beneficial to me is when people would move, when, when they'd go between the scenes and the lights would drop. You know, because then, then you don't see people walking up down the aisles at all, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, if, yeah. if that doesn't work out, that's fine. It's no big deal. <laughs> I will do that mostly. <laughs> but I have I had a request to get the uh, the Ode to Joy oh. on video, so... Yeah. yeah, yeah. the first night I heard that, when we were sitting there, I turned to Ellen and I said, Beethoven must be rolling over yeah. his grave. That was terrific. Yeah, 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 it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was good. Oh yeah, good. yeah, that was good. I agree.
get double credits for coming two nights in a row? Oh, uh, no, I didn't see the start of this. Oh, oh, okay, well, there you go. There you go. They're all there. Like, yeah, yeah. I put them and I put them all on your. I put them all on your event. Cool. Yeah. All right, thank you. I'm, so now you just got to go through and figure out which oh, one yeah. you're gonna use. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey Joe, how you doing?
so bad.
Elvis. Here. Beckford. Here. Berger. Here. Cassidy. Yo, oh, I mean here. Davidson. Present. Feinstein.
your bush. Roses are red, violets are blue. If I had your breath, I'd live in a zoo. <laughs> she wrote this in green felt dip pen, right on top of the picture of our school. After I read what she wrote, I never let anyone sign my yearbook again, or even look at it. I just stuck it away in an old bookcase at home. Until last week, the mailman handed me this package. My mother sent me the yearbook because she thought I should have it to show the kids. At first I was going to hide it, but then I realized that it came up again and something had to be done about it. So I went out and I bought a green felt tip pen. And I started practicing Mary Jo's handwriting. And then after her poem, I wrote in big letters, ha ha, just kidding. You know, what embarrasses me the most isn't what she wrote in my yearbook.
I decided that the best way to deal with high school was to get rid of all the evidence. <laughs> For starters, here's the good old Harper High yearbook. Can I tell you? That's a heck of a lot cheaper than therapy. <laughs> Here's a picture of Denise Ormond, the most popular girl in Yarbrough Line. <coughs> and here's me, Artie Bellamy, the co-chairman of the locker room. Just before the final band, senior algebra, Denise talked to me for the first time ever. But she wanted me to cheat for her. I'd write the answers down on a piece of paper and have it fall to the floor. Then she'd drop her pencil, and when she knows her dad, she'd make up did anyone did she said she'd like to take her out sometime? This was my one chance, and I only had a moment to decide. I said I couldn't. I didn't say it was wrong or anything, I just said I couldn't. From that moment on, she never spoke to me again. Two years out of high school, I got crazy one night, and God, before I knew what I was doing, I called her up. I said, this is Harvey Bellerby. She said, who? I said, <clears throat> Harvey Bellerby from YHS. She said, oh, what do you want? I should have hung up there and then, but I didn't. The next thing I said was, well, Denise, I wanted to call you to tell you I changed my mind. <laughs>
home called Daisy Gate, which was the last week of the year, and there was always a Daisy princess chosen from all the senior girls. On a certain day in June, every single one of us had to walk across the auditorium stage in front of everybody and say our names into the microphone. This was supposed to be another example of democracy in action. The teachers would write down the names of the six best girls, and then we'd all get to vote on them for Daisy Princess. That way, nobody was overlooked. I still remember exactly what I wore on elimination day. I imagine we all do. What I remember best, though, is Nancy Dugan. She was the tallest girl in our class. Probably the most of the boys even. And while the rest of us tried to smile as we paraded across that stage, she had the guts to go out there and say, my name is Nancy Dugan, and I decline the nomination. I was voted best public speaker. I was voted friendliest. I was voted student council president. I was voted best dancer. I'm the one to tell you the votes. I didn't win any big awards or prizes. I know winning was the name of the game back in high school. If you couldn't point to some kind of trophy, you weren't really anybody. Still, I remember this one time during a track meet when there were about six girls up ahead of me. This guy called out my name. Come on, Sammy. You can do it, Sammy. And it only took third that day. Just hearing that guy yell my name, I'm going to be one of the best moments in my whole life. I was standing on the third step of the North Staircase. I even remember the step. That's how important it was when Jack Soloway told me he thought I was hot. We both blushed and I had to run to my next class. I spent that entire period writing the word hot over and over my notebook. It was one of the most thrilling things that had ever, ever happened to me. And I remember thinking, I can die happy now. No matter what happened to me ever, ever again, I could always tell myself that Jack Soloway thought I was hot. Once when I was cleaning out my wallet, I decided to throw away a snapshot of my old high school girlfriend. Who needs that kind of thing, right? Now imagine me on my hands and knees at 3 a.m. in the garage, sifting through the contents of the garbage can. Now imagine my wife asking me what I'm really doing. <laughs> <laughs>
thing last night where I never took the courses that were required for graduation. And I had to go back to school to make them up. So I sat in this desk that was way too small for me, but nobody else in the classroom seemed to notice I was any different from them. And then Mrs. Delaney, my American problems teacher, starts passing out these test booklets. And I look at mine, and someone has drawn obscene pictures all over it, and I don't know what to do. Should I tell Mrs. Delaney and call attention to myself, or do I just ignore the pictures, in which case she'll probably think I drew them? The pictures are in pencil. You see all these breasts and male genitalia and sick people doing horrible things, but as soon as I get them on a race, another one comes up, and another, and another, and finally Mrs. Delaney's walking around and she's collecting the booklets, and I look at mine. I haven't even opened it. I don't know what the test was about. And what's worse, the pictures are still there. So I start ripping pieces of them up, trying to stuff it all in my mouth and chew it all up and swallow it before she gets to me. And then she's standing over me and she goes, where's your book, with Jamie? What have you done with it? And that's as far as it went. I woke up in a cold sweat, but I remember thinking I would have said, I ate it, you wish I ate it. But I have never caught that to Mrs. Delaney in my life. Oh, 
The wife hates it when I tell that story. It's not funny, Barry. It's not funny. You had to be there, you know. You just had to be there.
My name is Monica. I can't wait to run into him again. He'll say, what are you doing now? And I'll say, I'm teaching at the university. And then I'll say, what are you doing now? And when he tells me he's selling used cars, I'll say, I'm so glad. That's exactly where a putz like you belongs. I demand an apology from every student in my class for not recognizing what a great guy I was. <laughs> and once more, I'm not going to accept this apology. <laughs> I demand you know what it's like to walk down the hall in a leather sweater and have everyone smile at me. I demand to be student body president. I demand to be cute. <laughs> I demand a full athletic scholarship to the college of my choice. I demand, ah oh, hell, I don't want it now, I wanted it then.
I mean, I have a family now, responsibilities. But then every once in a while, someone will come up to me and say something like, you're the real cheerleader type, aren't you? Or you must have been a cheerleader when you were in high school. And I always say, sure I was. Maybe people can mean it like a put down, but I don't see it that way. I see it like a compliment. Like, they were trying to tell me, I can see you have a real positive kind of outlook on the world. Then again, there's the dumb ones who think it was a big joke to have been a cheerleader in high school. The best one I ever had was when Molly Baker and Chrissy Nickel and I did this routine at the state tournament because the Pirates were about 10 points behind and everyone was getting so discouraged. And so we went out and did Who's Got the Muscle 16 times. I mean, we were almost dead by the end, but it really got everyone all charged up. And then when the Pirates came from behind and actually won, I felt like I'd given my all, and it really meant something. People always tell me, oh, Jenny, you're just too full of pep. I can't keep up with you. But you know what I really hate to see? I hate to see the people who said I care about. The people who are close to me, all down in the dumps, all the time, over nothing. You know the type, worry, worry, worry. You know what their problem is? They don't know how to get excited about things. <laughs> me? Well, Ever since I came home from the hospital, I guess I'm just excited just to be alive. I remember when I was in the car with Danny and we were driving home, and I turned to him and I said, well, if we can beat cancer, we can beat anything. And you know what he said to me? He turned to me and said, you really are a cheater, aren't you? Billy Banks was my year, but in some ways, he was like 10 years ahead of me. He saw through all the crap before I even knew it was crap. But that meant the administration really came down hard on him. If they could have, they would have crucified him. Billy just laughed in their faces, and somehow, he always got away with it. Johnny Debernardis was a real pain in the butt. Thought he knew everything. But if you ask me, he was just a short little guy with bad acne who needed a haircut. Mike was crazy. <laughs> really crazy. You know how in high school they'd always tell you to stand up for what you believe in, and then when you did, they'd kill you? Well, they couldn't kill Jerry. People like Todd can't hack it in the real world. They just can't hack it. You probably can have some kind of slacker. When Sally told me what happened to Alex, I couldn't believe it. I thought he'd be a lawyer going to politics or, I don't know, the last thing I ever expected him to be was a high school teacher. But when I think about it, that's exactly what he ought to be. Mike became a teacher. Johnny, he became a teacher. Todd became a teacher. Jerry became a teacher. Hear ye, hear ye. Our long-awaited 10th reunion will be held at Robert Louis Stevenson High.
Superman! How are you, old jerk face? What the heck are you doing now? I'm a doctor. <laughs> Come on, man. No, really, I'm in a neurosurgery up at the medical center. Neurosurgery? Last time I saw you, you were right your own shadow. That's Peggy Carstairs. She sat next to me in class. And that's one Dan was keeping up on in the cafeteria. And that's not seriously. Are you going to help anybody? Not to them. As far as I can tell, the only people who came are the real threats. Wait a minute. That's Tony Clark. I think that was not here. Are you kidding? He was student body president. How are you going to help me?
So these are the kids I went to school with. What do you think? I think that you should have been born in prison. Well, thank God for that. See that girl? Mm -hmm. She's my wife. She was so pretty and popular and poised. Wait a minute. That's how I was imagining you must have been. No way, but I'm just die trying. <laughs>